Hello YouTube and welcome back to Steel Forest Welding and Forge. Today I have a special if not uh, irritating piece for you today. Today I'm going to show you fine folks how to braze cast iron parts. So why is it that cast iron is the bane of welders? Well that is because cast iron has a very high carbon content usually along the lines of 6% or higher give or take. Your average mild steel has a fraction of the amount of carbon content. You're looking at like 0.02% or something like that. Very, very low. This high carbon content is what gives cast iron a very uh, high strength as far as wear and tear goes, but it's very brittle. And when heat from a arc hits it, it, ten it tends to just fall apart. Now, how do you identify cast iron? Well, when you look at a part that has like a smooth finish like this, simply turn it over. And if you look at the side and the bottom of this part, you can see this rough surfacing. That is from the sand from the casting process. That is the easiest way to identify cast iron. Or if the part that you uh, has brought into you is broken in half, simply look at the granular structure. If it's a very uh, bumpy and coarse structure, again, more than likely, that is going to be cast iron. So how do you repair these cast iron parts? There are a couple options. Some of these are weldable. The way that you weld these parts is by meeting certain conditions. One of those conditions being uh, preheating. You need to preheat these parts up to a temperature that is warm enough to the point where you can barely hold your hand on the part. Now the reason we have to do this is to prevent the part from uh, rapidly cooling. Uh, what happens if we heat up just this area here to weld it and the rest of this part is cold, this whole cold area is going to be a big heat sink for your weld. And that rapid contraction is going to cause the weld that you just made to break. So you have to preheat the entire part. Two, you typically need some kind of high nickel electrode. Uh, this is a very good process for stick welding actually. They do make a lot of high nickel electrodes for stick welding. However, those uh, rods are very expensive. And once you open a package of stick electrodes, unless you have a rod oven, which I do not have, those rods will eventually begin to lose their tensile strength and they're practically trash. Now, the other option available is brazing, which is what we're gonna be doing today. Now, the process for brazing and welding are actually very similar. However, with brazing, we're gonna be using a brass filler and we're gonna be using an oxy acetylene torch to actually lay this bead down. So the plan is we're going to heat this entire part to the point where it's very warm, to the point where I can barely keep my hand on it. Then we're going to uh, focus on this area here where the crack is. We're going to fill this with a brazing rod, which I will show you. And it's going to essentially be the same filling process as TIG welding. We're going to be having our heat source following our crack, and we're going to be laying our brass rod in as we go. And it's going to look like almost like a series of really messy nickels. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so here's a close-up view of the break. Now, as you can see, the crack runs along right here, stops about right here. If we turn it over, you can see how this crack runs all the way through, from here all the way to here. Now, one other unique property with cast iron is that while you are heating this up, there is always the chance that this part will crack further. So what you need to do is find the ends of your cracks and drill uh, a relief hole. And all this hole does is prevent that crack from spreading any further. So what I'm gonna do is on this side, I'm going to measure down how far I wanna make a hole about right here in the corner. And we're just gonna drill a hole straight through there so that if this part this crack continues to travel, it'll hit that hole and stop. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, for preheating this, I'm going to opt to use the cutting torch head. We don't really need to use the welding torch head. It's a little bit too small. This is a big part. We do want to heat this up, uh, you know, get there at a fairly decent pace. Now, the settings I'm going to have on my torch are about 6 PSI for the acetylene and about 20 PSI for the oxygen. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and preheat this entire part. Once this entire part is warm to the point where I can just keep my hand on it, then we're going to start heating this area. Now, 
We don't want to heat this to the point where we're bringing the material to critical temperature, but we do want to get it very warm. Brass and copper have a very high melting point. Now, here's the brazing rod. These rods are designed to melt at a lower temperature than pure copper or brass. This white coating on here is a flux to assist in the um, melting and to prevent contamination in your pool. But what we'll essentially do, heat this up and we'll be moving at a angle similar to a TIG torch and dipping this in as the material warms up. Now we're probably gonna overfill a little bit and we're gonna go all the way to the edge. Now, <clears throat> how well this copper or this brass sits in there, again, depends on how warm it is and how clean this area is. So uh, we're gonna hose it down once with a little bit of simple green, clean it off, and then we're gonna start preheating. Now we're going to slowly and evenly heat up our part using what is called a neutral flame. A neutral flame is a flame that is used for heating rather than cutting. Instead of those sharp blue cones you would typically see on a cutting flame, those cones now extend throughout the entire flame. Typically you see this flame as you are first adjusting your oxygen to a settling mixture. So now we're going to start focusing our heat in here. We're going to let it get nice and warm. And again, we don't want it to get the critical temperature. We just want it to get warm. And we're start dipping our rod in here. Now we'll know if it's not warm enough because the flux will burn off the brass. The brass will melt, but it won't sort of wash into the uh, cast iron. There we go. You hear that noise from the brass burning in there. There we go. You can see we're just kind of dipping our rod in and out. Moving our heat around. We want to keep our heat fairly mobile. And we are overfilling. We're keeping that area, that, bra that brass is going nice and warm. You can see I'm not pulling my heat too much of an angle. It's a little bit more of a straight down motion. That is so I focus my heat in one spot. Whoops. So now what I'm doing is I'm going back over my braze and I'm checking for any spots that I may have missed. After checking for spots that I've missed, the next step is to go over this entire braze again, as you can see right here, for a second pass. What this does is the second pass allows the brass to wash in even further to the braze, giving it an, an even stronger joint. You want to take your time with these next two steps. Don't want to miss any spots, and you want to make sure you get a nice tight bond. Now I'm going to try and turn on its side and fill in that hole in the side. Now let's try and fill that in. Let it get nice and warm. Hopefully I got you guys a good angle where you can see this. Sort of melting down. There we go. Let's go and shut our torch off. And quickly put this guy in the sand. Right, unfortunately, I do not have a bucket that is big enough for this guy. But what we can do is pour a lot, as much sand around as we can. And just let this guy cool for as long as possible. All right, so it's been about 45 minutes. The sand up here is actually quite warm. Down here, this part still is warm to the touch. That's good. That means this has been slowing very slowly over the past uh, 40 minutes. This is still warm, but everything here I can touch. So we've cooled down enough. We can move this off. Let's look at our braze. 
as you can see, it's quite ugly, but that's how they look. Okay, crack didn't travel any further, so that's good. Let's go ahead and look at it in the side. Okay, the crack did not travel down. There's that little spot there that I brazed. Looks good. Ugh, turn it over. All right. Crack didn't travel any further. I can just see some of that braze coming through on this side. Now, if we attempt to braze this side, it is possible that I'll put a good braze on there, but it's also possible the braze on the other side will just melt off or melt through. So for now, we're going to leave this and we'll see it ha what happens. Okay, so the next step is to clean this up with a series of varying grits of sandpaper. I actually opted to use a aluminum die grinding bit like you see here. I'm just using my drill because it's a lot more maneuverable. And I'm just going through, removing material. The nice thing about this bit is that it will not gum up like a normal die grinding bit would with a soft material. This is actually making pretty quick work of this. I'm just gonna keep going at it and showing you guys an update every couple of minutes. All right, we've got this braze and sanded down with 80 grit about as far as it'll go. There's an ever slight hump in there still. Luckily, no material rests on this part, just a guard, but still want it to be as nice as possible. I'm gonna go, go ahead and move up to 120 grit, clean that up a little bit more and keep going and eventually clean this whole thing off with maybe a uh, scotch bright pad. Just get all this gunk off here for the client. All right, here's the final product. Now, as you can see, there are no more cracks. All the low spots are filled in. A few of these spots here, there's a little bit of a, uh, it's not a gouge really, but a place where the brass just didn't really bond to it. But I didn't want to take this down any further than I had. When I move my hand across here, I can barely feel anything at all. I don't want to take this down anymore and um, risk possibly uh, scratching up this surface too much. This is definitely going to hold. I'm happy with how this turned out. More often than not, you need typically two tries of brazing something. And if you're lucky and you're careful, you can get it done in one. Well, there you go, folks. There is a quick crash course in how to braze. This turned out very nice. I think my client's going to be very happy. This looks like a good, strong joint. So this is definitely going to withstand the test of time. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Do all that wonderful stuff. And I'm going to go lay down because I am tired after all that sanding. Work hard, folks, and stay humble.